In this video, I wanna show you how to use the coalesce function in Power BI. I'm gonna show you how to use this function step by step and also some scenarios of when to use it. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's jump right into this demo that I've created for you today. I have just one table that I've visualized here on the report here. We have a table, country tables, that just has four or five different columns here. And let's start by creating a card right here. And I want to just try to start visualizing the total sales in this card. So I'm going to add the total sales in this field. So as you notice, if you cross-reference it from the table at the bottom, it will just add up the total sales across all the four different countries. And if we add a um, country filter on this visual, and let's say we want to see, let's say, uh, Germany or France, you'll see that it just gives us the total sales for that country, which is exactly what we expect. Now, when we select Frankfurt, Germany from this uh, country filter, you'll see that it shows us blank. And what we want to show, let's say here, is we want to show zero instead of blank. Now, coalesce is, uh, is something that you can use to replace blanks with something else. So in this case, we want to replace the total sales when it's blank to instead be zero. Now, to do that, it's pretty simple. If we create a, let's say a new measure here, and we'll create coalesce using measure. And if I start just typing coalesce here, it says here it returns the first argument that does not evaluate to a blank value. If all arguments evaluate to blank values, blank is returned. So if I complete that, you'll see that we can add, or we have to add two values uh, as a minimum. And then you can see that the triple dot here, I'll show you how to use that later, but essentially you can add as many expression as you want here. So in this case, we want to just get the total sales and we want to say for the sum of total sales, we need to put this um, within a context, a sum context, because it doesn't have a row context, we're creating measure. And we're saying if the sum of the total sales is a blank, I want it to be zero. And that's what we want. So as a minimum, we have that measure. We hit enter. And now instead of using the total sales in our card here, we'll replace this with our coalesce measure right here. So you'll see now that when we select Germany, it shows zero instead of blank. And for the other countries, it will do exactly the same thing as before except that now we're replacing this blank with zero. Now, if you work with something like this before, you probably have thought about this, right? So why don't we just um, get this sum and then add zero at the end of it. So if we just do the sum instead of using a coalesce, it will do the exact same value because all it does is it just forces the value uh, to be zero instead of blank. And you're absolutely right. This is actually how I did it before until I learned the coalesce. And what I figured as I looked into this coalesce function is it actually has a bit more utility than I thought. So let me show you another scenario. So now I want you to pay attention to these country columns that we have, these four country columns. And let's say we want to create a new column that just gets the first non-blank value from these four columns. So let's say in the UK country or down here, uh, we want to get UK for this new column because it's the first non-blank value. For USA, we want to get USA uh, because it's the first non-blank value and so on and so on. And the first instinct that you might have is a switch statement, which is a shorter version of the if statement. If you don't know how to use a switch statement, I covered it in a separate video. So go check it out if you haven't yet. So anyway, let's try to implement this switch statement here. Uh, so I can show you exactly what it does. Um, so switch country. And here we're gonna type the switch statement. So for the expression, we don't need an expression, so we'll just type true there. 
And from here, what we want to do is we want to evaluate and check if the first country is blank. And the value should be the country. So let's have a look at this because it's missing something. So this first expression here, we're saying if, if the country value in that column country is not blank, take the value from that column. Otherwise, we'll add some more values here to look through the next countries and then the next countries. So, so this part is pretty boring, so I'll just speed this bit up so you can move on to the next part. So this is a switch statement now. It's a bit lengthy, but I hope it's readable for you. So what it does is first it checks the country, the first column here. If it's not empty, we take the value there. And then if it is empty, we move on to the next one. So we check if this is empty. Uh, if it's not empty, take the value from there. If it is empty, we move on to the next one. And then we move on to the next one. So let's have a look at the value here on the table. If I add the switch country here, so you'll see exactly what we want. So we're getting the first non-blank value from all of these country columns. So you see here Frankfurt, Germany, France, USA, and UK. And if we look back at the switch statement here, it's actually quite lengthy, but you can minimize this using the coalesce uh, function. So let's create uh, a new column once again, so I can show you an example. So coalesce country. So now we're gonna type coalesce, and now it's asking us for values. So from here, let's say we want the country. If this is blank, give me country one. If this is blank, give me country two. If this is blank, give me country three. And that's it. So as you see, there's no other logic. What it will do is we'll get the first non-blank value from these group of columns that you've added here. And just to show you that it works, we're just going to add this in our table here and compare it with our switch country. So as you can see, we have the exact same results from between the switch and the coalesce, except the coalesce needs uh, fewer logic that you need to input for it to work. And that's really it for this video. I hope it helped you understand how and when to use the coalesce function in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.